Today is Groundhog Day. What does that mean astronomically? Well, not a thing, but it is astronomical in nature. But more importantly, this is February, and February is showing a lot of promise up in the sky to what to view. Stay tuned to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. This is the Groundhog Day edition. Yes, Groundhog Day. It, it, actually, it is an astronomical event because it is known also as a cross-quarter day. A quarter day is the first day of a season. For example, the winter solstice was a quarter day. The spring equinox, also known as the vernal equinox, is a quarter day. And the day between those two is known as a cross-quarter day. And that's today. Today is a cross-quarter day, and also the day that we like to see what a groundhog can do. And if he sees his shadow, get down, get back in your burrow. If he sees its shadow, it says that we'll have six more weeks of winter. And if it doesn't see its shadow, that means spring will be here soon. Well, the actual predictions are about maybe 39%. A flip of a coin is 50%. So it's said with a, a wink and a smile on the prediction from the, uh, the groundhog on, on Groundhog Day. Nonetheless, it is astronomical in nature, so let's talk astronomy. This is February, and we have some great targets to look at. We have the planets up in the western and southwestern sky in the evening hours, and that includes the planet Uranus. Yes, you can see Uranus with a small telescope or binoculars high in the south-southwest at uh, right after sunset. And then shining brilliantly in the southwestern sky is the planet Venus. Venus, as bright as it is now, will actually get even brighter as the next couple of weeks prevail, and uh, it'll be dominating the uh, southwestern and western sky all of winter going into spring and almost into summer, but uh, late May and early June, uh, it'll uh, disappear from the evening sky. Right now, Mercury has made an appearance over in the western southwestern sky. Very difficult to see, but you can see it. As a matter of fact, I can see it with the Celestron telescope during the uh, uh, late afternoon hours. This is a view. Uh, from about quarter after four this afternoon, you could see uh, Venus and Mercury with the telescope. Uh, you can really see it uh, during the evening hours, but Mercury is so low in the sky, I have too many trees over in my western sky, I can't see it by then. So I have to uh, actually uh, review it during the uh, time when the sun is still up, but it can be done. But nighttime planets, actually morning planets, are, are becoming more dominant. Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn will be rising about two hours earlier per month. So uh, right now, Mars is rising about 3.45 in the morning. Actually, Mars is not so fast. Mars is only rising about 30 minutes uh, earlier each month. But Jupiter is rising almost, and Saturn, about two hours earlier each month. So right now, Jupiter is rising at about uh, a little bit, little bit after 6. By the end of February, it should be rising a little bit after 4 in the morning catching up to Mars and then Saturn is rising as well uh, it's coming out of the morning twilight and getting into the darker skies so you have those targets to look at uh, during the month of February but let's not forget you still have some great nighttime targets to look at including the uh, amazing information coming out of the constellation Orion you have of course the Orion Nebula and then you have uh, the Horsehead Nebula the Horsehead Nebula and then the Rosette Nebula nearby uh, great targets to look at through any small telescope uh, and with time exposures uh, you get some fantastic colors coming in from those. Uh, you also have straight overhead right now at sunset the Pleiades. The Pleiades star uh, cluster is always a great target to look at. Let's uh, talk about some galaxies. The galaxies are becoming more dominant. Of course we're coming into galaxy season which uh, is now beginning. Uh, you have uh, M81 and M82. Those are some great galaxies to look at. They're high in the northeastern sky uh, during the um, mid-evening hours now. And uh, M81 is Bode's Nebula or Bode's Galaxy. And M82 uh, is a side galaxy. Instead of a flat-looking galaxy, it's more of on its side. 
and it looks like a, a well like a cigar hence the nickname the cigar galaxy and then rising a little bit after that by about an hour and a half or two hours uh, over in the northeast of course uh, will be the uh, whirlpool galaxy that's always a favorite target for many and let's not forget uh, over in the eastern sky coming up after about one o'clock in the morning uh, you have the constellation Leo rising and in Leo you have the triplet in Leo three uh, galaxies there and M 100. Uh, M100 just recently supported a supernova and I was able to capture it late in January. I captured it with the Maxitoff Newtonian telescope and uh, tried to bring out the, uh, the uh, supernova which is very difficult to see because it's near the core of the galaxy itself but I was able to resolve it somewhat. It's kind of blurry. Uh, I might give it a try uh, with the Celestron uh, after the moon moves out of the way, but by then, who knows, the supernova might have washed out by then. But other targets are coming up in the uh, uh, February sky, so keep your telescopes ready, keep attuned to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy, and I'll try to keep you posted with what I'm doing out here in the garden. Remember, if you like my channel, please hit like on the little bell at the bottom. Uh, that will also register uh, that anytime I post a new video, you'll see it as it's been posted. So, again, thanks for watching, and unless you need rain, clear skies. It says uh, go to, and I'm going to Venus right now. And uh, there you can see the position of the camera or the and, and telescope moving across from the eastern meridian to the western meridian. It's crossing the meridian right now. It's, it's past Polaris, even though I can't see it during the daytime. Anyway, it is heading toward Venus right now. And Venus is showing a uh, waning gibbous phase, and it'll be dominant in the um, well, the western sky, southwestern sky for all of February, March, and going into April and May as well. And it's actually very bright right now, but getting even brighter uh, over the next several weeks. All right, it's homing in on Venus. Let's put on the camera and um, see if I can find it right here. And, oh, there it is. There's Venus right there. Um, picking up, you can see the, uh, the gibbous phase at the moment uh, associated with uh, Venus. All right, what about Mercury? Can I pick up Mercury? Let's find out. Let's go back to the uh, PWI and say go to Mercury. Mercury's over here, and I want Mercury. Go to Mercury. It's going over there, and let's go back to the camera, and that was Venus there, and I'm looking across monitors. That's why I'm looking the other way. Uh, my camera's over here, and this monitor's over here. Uh, anyway, I'll just scoot over a little bit. How's that? Uh, it's kind of bright. Let me lower the intensity a little bit, see if we can pick up Mercury at all. There's a little bit of, the, uh, uh, of a delay here. Oh, there it is. There's Mercury. And uh, bring it up just a little bit. Uh, it is also showing uh, phases. Let's see if I can get a little bit brighter. Um, it's really difficult to focus right now um, because of the bright blue sky in the background even though it's showing green here. That's Mercury and it's showing a waning gibbous phase as well. A little bit more fuller than Venus is at the moment. Uh, in a couple, uh, about a week or so, it'll be about a half Mercury and then a crescent Mercury. But there it is. Uh, again, it's, let's see, it's 418 in the afternoon on Groundhog Day and there I'm picking up Mercury up in the sky. Among the many planets that will be available in the next several weeks, uh, Mercury is one of them. 